All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Golang tab writer package. Now, let's say you have some data that fits well in a table. If you were to print it off to the terminal, you may end up with something looking sort of like this. All the information is there, but it's not formatted, so it's not very readable. Say, for instance, I wanted to find all the zip codes. They're there, but I kind of have to look around to find them. Now, on the other hand, if I was going to print off the exact same information using the tab writer package, would be able to format my data. So I could treat individual pieces of data like a cell, put them into a column. So all that like information is together. It's just real easy for your eyes to see and digest and just make it look a lot nicer in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is done. So like I said, we're going to be using the tab writer package, which is found inside of the text package. And we went ahead and created a data type called customer. And then we created six customers, saved them into a slice of customers, saved them to the variable customers. So we're going to go ahead and range through customers. And then we printed off all the different fields in that struct. And that's where we got that unformatted uh, data on the, that we looked at here previously. Then we just printed off an empty space with using print line, which gives us a new line. That way we could you know, have a one line of empty space between our unformatted data and our formatted data. Now down here is where we print uh, our, our data using the tab writer package. So again, we're ranging through customers and we're printing each time, but we're going to go ahead and use the F print and we're going to be which requires a writer. And we're going to be passing in a writer that we create with the tab writer package. So let's go ahead and take a look, take a look at that. So we're at the tab writer package, which is inside the text package. And the package tab writer implements a write filter, which is tab writer dot writer that translates tabbed columns into input, I'm sorry, in input into properly aligned text. So it's going to go ahead and help align everything so that we can have those nice little columns. So like I said, we're using the, uh, the fump, uh, let's see, f print function uh, to, to print off our information, which as we said, it takes a writer. And if we take a look at what a writer is, it is an interface which has the write method that accepts a slice of byte, returns an int and an error. And of course, you know, fprint uses that method to, to write. Uh, anyway, so let's go back, take back to the uh, tab writer package. And again, this is, uh, we're going to go ahead and like I said, we're going to create a new writer. So we're going to use the uh, new writer function and it's going to return our pointer to our writer, which eventually we pass to that, that F print function. And of course, uh, it has to be a writer for it to be accepted. because That's what F print is expecting. And since it has this method, write, which takes a slice of byte and returns an int and an error, it is a writer. And we're also going to use this function called uh, flush. Let's go ahead and go back to our code. So again, we're going to pass it a writer, which we create using the tab writer function. And we need to make sure that we use flush at the end to clean out the buffer. Uh, anyway, so we have our tab writer package with the new writer function. It's going to go ahead and take a writer. And like I said, just any writer we could use. Um, but in this particular case, we're just going to use the standard so OS for operating system. So package, we're going to go ahead and use the standard out, which by default is terminal. But if you wanted to use a different writer, you could. So we're going to go ahead and pass it that writer. And we have our minimum width, which is going to be how much space we have there. Um, and then we have our tab width. We have our padding, which can be added to that as well. And then uh, what the padding character, what kind of character we wanted to use. In this case, we were using spaces to separate everything, and then whatever flags we want to pass in. 
So the tab writer debug is going to go ahead and give us these nice little pipes so that way it looks more like columns. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a, we're going to go ahead and use, create a couple different uh, uh, write filters, so I have different writers. And this one, we're going to change that, uh, that padding character. Instead of just spaces in between, it should come out as periods. So let's go ahead. And... There we go. As you can see, we replace those with periods. Now, this one, we're going to go ahead and change the minimum width. And that last one, it was zero. So as you can see, um, these are only as wide as the widest value that, that you have. So some of these don't have any extra width in there, and only the shorter ones have that extra uh, characters. So this one, we're going to go ahead and change it back to uh, having a minimum width of 10. So if we were able to count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that is the minimum width. Now, if you still look at some of these, if they're longer than 10, they don't have any extra padding. And that's where this next one here is we're gonna change the uh, padding so that way we can have a little bit of space and it's not right up against uh, those pipes there. So like I said, this one's gonna have a minimum width of 10 and a padding of two. So we should see on, when we have these characters well longer than 10, we should see an extra two padding in there. Ah, uh, there we go. So before this was right beside that, and now because it, it has that minimum of 10, but we have a padding in there to make sure to make it just look a little bit nicer. And this one, we have zero minimum width, but we make sure we have a uh, padding of five. And as you can see, uh, that one's actually a little bit too long. Wider than my terminal output at the moment. There we go, that one looks a little bit, a little bit nicer. So uh, this one doesn't have um, that minimum of 10, so it's not putting the extras here, be, you know, like anywhere because we're under 10, but it is making sure that we still have an extra padding of 2. Now, this one here is a little bit different. Notice that we're changing this to, uh, to a tab, so we're going to be separating instead of using you know, empty spaces or dots, we're going to be using tabs, so they're going to be those longer spaces. And we've changed one of our flags here, so we have our tab writer dot tab indent. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those flags. So here's our tab indent. Always, always use the tab for indentation col uh, columns, uh, pet, which is Padding of leading empty cells on the left, independent of pad character. So we have a couple different flags here, one for HTML, uh, one for uh, stripping some of the extra escape, uh, the escape character. Um, we'll get to a line right. The uh, default is a line left. So notice there is no, uh, no align left. It's just that by default. So if you want it to align to the right, we switch it just to the right. And of course, the debug is going to go ahead and give us that pipe that we were previously getting. Okay, so we were using tabs. Now, one thing to be careful of is you want to make sure that your tab width, you, ha you need to pass in whatever the tab width is for your particular viewer. Now, I am in VS Code. So the default for this one, which you know is eight, um, you may have changed your default. But anyway, if I wanted to use something and it wasn't the default, so this one, this next one is purposely 
wrong so you can see what a mess it can look what it can look like since it is not obviously you know three spaces for your tab it should look a little funny there we go so again you want to make sure that you're using whatever your viewers uh default uh tab width Now this one, we're going to go back to using spaces. Uh, we had everything aligned to the left, but this time we're going to go ahead and align right. Okay, so everything was bunched up against the left. Now we've pushed it all to the right. So it's just a uh, preference to wherever you want that to be. And one of the key things here, uh, should have said this sooner is that it is looking for these tabs to know what is a cell of information so for instance you know it saw one tab you know so the data in front of that was uh one cell of inform you know one cell and then the next one you know we have our information and another another tab and of course then that would be you know, the next one so it knows how to treat these uh, your data where a cell begins and where a cell ends. So what is what part of what information? Um, you technically use tabs. Let's go ahead and show that. Tabs that you actually typed instead of using the symbol. It still works, but as you can see, yeah, that kind of, you could probably guess that's a tab, but you know, like this one here, uh, I don't know. That's not very readable. So it's just best to use the backslash T because it's going to be so much easier for someone reading your code to understand what's going on there. And here's an example um, that they give us inside the tab writer package. So here we have AA, we have our tab. Then our next cell is BB. Then we have our tab and then C. Let's just go ahead and run that real quick. When we get down to here, we have one cell. Then we don't have the next cell. And then we go back to AA tab and then another set of information tab and another set of information. And as you can see here, we had A, B. Now C is not followed by a tab, so it's not really being seen as a cell. That's why it's aligned left as you can see here as a b c it kind of lands in the same spots like hey this it knows that a a and a a are in the same column it knows b b and b b are in the same column now we get down to here we have a a but then we don't have any more columns so when we get down to here four a's and then our tab that looks like it's in that column but then when we get to this one, well, it's not following the same formatting as up here because we had that blank spot, so it didn't continue on. So uh, if your information doesn't have as many tabs in any one of those rows, it's gonna see it as kind of as a new table. So that's the reason I believe they you know, made this particular example the way that they did it. So, um, and of course, remember we need to make sure we run Flush at the end, so we clear everything out. Uh, I'm trying to think if we we missed anything. Uh, just left some notes up here, uh, just for quick reference for what each of these different parts are. But just remember, um, you know, you're gonna you know, we're gonna have you're gonna pass in your you're gonna pass in your writer that you create yourself, and we're using the tab writer, so we can set all the different uh, pieces of information, you know, where we want it to write out to, what's the minimum width, what's the tab width if we're going to be writing with tabs. Um, also, how much padding. So even if it is the minimum width, how much padding do we want on each side of it? And what do we want to display? We want to display, uh, you know, a space. We want question marks. I know how silly that would look, but, I mean, you could technically do that. 
And then what flags do we want to pass in? Do we want debug? Do we want these little bars to pass in? Do we want to align right? Do we want to align, you know, we keep the default line left? You know, all that information is for however you want to format um, your table. So again, this just makes it look a lot more readable and just a lot nicer by the time you're done. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank everyone out there for uh, sharing my videos on some different sources. Uh, really appreciate it. It really helps me out. So uh, thank you very much. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one.